right, by the scale, and that will either go up or down. We then, um, within an if statement just here, creating a uh, another float array of eight points, okay, just like the one above for the texture coordinates was eight points. This is eight points. So we've got each point of the, uh, sorry, each point is X and Y, and we have four of them inside our quad. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm saying if center has been set, in other words, if center of image, if that particular argument has been defined as yes, that means we want to have the um, quad or the square of our shape or the, the, the shape in which our image is going to be drawn, sorry, to be centered around the point that was provided. So what I do is I basically on here say um, for the first point, it's going to be the quad width and the quad height, okay, divided by two. In other words, we only want it half. So this is the divided by two is just giving us the center. So the quad width and quad height is actually defining the top left hand corner of our um, quad, okay? So quad width and quad height is giving us the top right hand corner of our quad, okay? Now, we're then moving on to point two, which is saying quad width again, okay, except this time it's minus quad height. So this is giving us the bottom right-hand corner of our quad, okay? We're then moving on and saying it's minus width and positive height, so that gives us the top left-hand corner of the quad. And then last of all, we have minus width and minus height, which gives us the bottom left-hand corner of the quad. Because we're obviously working in OpenGL space here, um, and we have defined earlier on that the viewport of our game is orthogonal, and we've really specified that one point in OpenGL space is equivalent to one pixel, okay? And that's why we can do this quite happily. If you're working in 3D, then again, you'd have to work out, well, how many, how many pixels in screen space are represented by one um, unit in OpenGL space. And, and that stuff took me a while to get my head around. So again, looking at the Nihi early tutorials is quite good for getting your head around how some of this stuff works. But what it's really doing is it's saying, I'm gonna use the quad height and the quad width divided by two to make sure that the point at which I'm rendering my image is in the middle of the square. And that allows us to do that. Um, if you don't center it, then we are literally, we're not worried about doing this minor stuff, okay? Because we just want to have everything drawn from the bottom left-hand corner. So we go literally from um, quad height and quad width, which is going to be the top right-hand corner, to quad width and zero, which is the bottom right-hand corner, zero width and quad height, top left-hand corner, and then zero, zero, bottom left-hand corner, okay? Take some time to get your head around that because that can be a bit confusing. Um, but once you have got your head around it, it actually does make a lot of sense. Um, I'm just probably not describing it as well as it could be described, so apologies for that. So we've now got two arrays. We've got our um, coordinates. We know where inside our texture we want to go and grab our image from. We know the size of our quad and where we want to render it. So now it's a case of actually going and rendering that, okay? And for that, we run this render at method, which is going to allow us to render, this is actually gonna do the real work now, this is gonna do the OpenGL work to actually render this information to the screen. And that's going to be the next method that uh, we move to over the uh, on this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do here is just uh, paste in the render method, and we'll start working our way through it. So the render at method is the actual method that, that really does render to the screen. It, uh, it takes the two arrays that we've created. Um, it takes the texture coordinates array and it takes the quad vertices array. And it also takes the point at which we want to actually render these to the screen. And we then actually go and use the OpenGL to do this. Now, there are a couple of things that I've changed here from tutorial one. Um, which we're going to go and sort of finish changing in a moment. Um, but in tutorial one, we, in the initialize the init with coder method, we actually um, defined a lot of the OpenGL parameters like the client states. Um, we defined the um, texture bindings. We defined a whole bunch of different bits and pieces. Um, having done a bit more reading, um, it's probably best to not sort of set that once globally, because for example, for blending, 
Um, blending is quite a, an intensive process, and so you only want to really have blending switched on when you really need it. So it seems that the good practice is to actually um, only switch on certain parameters and certain values in OpenGL when you need them and then switch them off afterwards so that the next item being drawn controls itself in terms of does it use blending or, or does it use um, any kind of transformation, etc. So we're going to be removing some of the um, GL configuration in that init with code and we'll go and do that in a moment. Um, but it does mean that obviously I've moved some of it into this method here so that every single time an image gets drawn we define the parameters necessary to actually draw the image as we require it to with blending and so on. So what we'll do is I'll just start to move through the code that we've got here um, and the first thing you'll see that we're doing is we've got this GL push matrix. Um, GL push matrix really saves the current matrix that is being used in terms of um, translation, in the, where are you on the screen, rotation, and so on. Um, so that if you push something or if you push something to the GL stack, it's saving that 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 matrix, that transformation matrix, the current transformation matrix. And then later we can pull it off the stack, sorry, pop it off the stack, and it returns it to where it was. So it's quite handy because it means that we can say, well, I don't really care what's gone on and what other things are doing. Save all of that, then go and translate to where I want to draw my image and, and bind my texture and draw my image and change my colors. And when I've done all of that, I'm then going to go back to the state it was before the image was drawn so that the images end up being um, separate from one another. They don't interfere with each other in terms of rotating and translating and things like that. So that's why I'm saying save the matrix as it is, in other words, the current configuration of the screen, etc., and then start doing the image work. So that's what push matrix does. When I've done that, I then um, issue the translate uh, command. And what this takes is the point that has been passed in, um, and it takes the X, the Y, and because we, there is no Z plane, there is no in and out of the screen in 2D, uh, I'm setting that as zero. So it really translates the viewport um, and specifies the point at which I'm gonna start drawing from as being the point in which I've actually um, passed in as, as one of my parameters in this particular method. So I move to where I'm actually going to be drawing my image I then issue the rotate command um, and the way that I'm rotating and the way that the rotate command works is that it takes an X, a Y, a Z um, amount. Yes, that's right, sorry. Um, we change that. It takes a rotation amount and then it says, am I gonna be applying this rotation amount to the X, the Y or the Z axes? Okay, now, I've got the rotation as, as a negative here of whatever is sent in, so that if you send in 45 degrees, it actually rotates right 45 degrees. If you send in a negative value, it will rotate to the left. So I added a negative here just so it was going clockwise um, with a positive degree of rotation. Um, if you set one in each of these areas, so one for X, one for Y, one for Z, it would rotate in that space. It would actually rotate around all of those axes, okay? Um, rotating all of them at the same time means you can end up with something called gimbal lock. I don't really know enough about it to explain what it is, um, but again, it's something you can look up if you're worrying about it, um, or you're wanting to use it, sorry, inside um, maybe 3D work. But for 2D, if you're looking at the screen, and you want to rotate around a single point, the actual point you're rotating around is on the Z axis, in other words, in and out of the screen. You're not rotating